Hello, everybody. You're listening to Let's Master English, and my name is Coach Shane. How are you doing, everybody? Welcome back. This is Let's Master English Podcast 35. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast and downloading the podcast. This week's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Once again, I'm so excited about having this sponsor. If you sign up at www.audibletrial.com slash LME, you can get one free audiobook. But I'll tell you more about that later. Today we've got a news story, a very serious fact from Country Shane, and I'm going to answer a few of your questions. So enough chit-chat, let's begin. It's the slammer for a mom in Georgia. The 46-year-old mother was taken in for neglecting her 9-year-old daughter. When the mother had to work, she'd routinely drop her daughter off at the local park and give her money for lunch at Mickey D's. No harm ever came to the girl. The child is now in social services. Oh, that, that was a tough one. This is a tough story, everybody. Let me read it again, a little bit slower. It's the slammer for a mom in Georgia. The 46-year-old mother was taken in for neglecting her 9-year-old daughter. When the mother had to work, she'd routinely drop her daughter off at the local park and give her money for lunch at Mickey D's. No harm ever came to the girl. The child is now in social services. Okay, so this is actually a serious story with some controversy. But let's look at the sentences first. In the first sentence, it's the slammer for a mom in Georgia. So we have the vocabulary word slammer, S-L-A-M-M-E-R. And slammer refers to jail. The slammer. Now, why do we say slammer? Why does that mean jail? Well, when they shut the door of the jail, do they shut the door quietly? No. The image is, boom, they shut the door very loudly. Or, we can say in English, they slam the door. They slam the door shut. And that's the idea. Slammer means jail. So, it's the slammer for a mom in Georgia. That means in America, we have 50 states. One of those states is Georgia. Georgia is in the southeastern part of America. And there's a mom in Georgia who is now in jail. It's the slammer. A mother has, uh, somebody has been sent to the slammer for a mom in Georgia. Hmm, why is this? Why? The 46-year-old mother was taken in for neglecting her 9-year-old daughter. Okay, so the mother is 46. 46-year-old 46 mother. We do not say 46 years old mother. Because 46 years old is actually describing the mother. So there's no S when it's used, when a number is used as an adjective. The 46 year old mother was taken in. And we've studied the word, uh, the, the phrasal verb taken in before. It means arrested, taken to the police station, taken to jail. The 46 year old mother was taken in. Why? for neglecting her nine-year-old daughter. So once again, nine years old? No, nine-year-old daughter. Daughter of nine years, nine-year-old daughter. So here we have another keyword, 
neglecting. N E G L E C T I N G. Neglecting means not caring for. And sometimes it means ignoring. So the 46 year old mother was taken in for neglecting her nine year old daughter. That means this mother was not doing a good job of taking care of her daughter. She was ignoring her daughter. She wasn't caring for her daughter. So she was taken to jail. So what was the situation? The next sentence. When the mother had to work, she'd routinely drop her daughter off at the local park and give her money for lunch at Mickey D's. So now we can understand this is probably a single mother, meaning she's not married. It's just her and her daughter. And she had a job. So when this mother had to go to work, what did she do with her nine-year-old daughter? She would routinely, R-O-U, T-I-N-E-L-Y, routinely, regularly, drop her daughter off at the local park. To drop somebody off at somewhere means to leave somebody at the place, to take somebody and leave them there at the place. So when the mother went to work, she would take her daughter to the park and leave her there while she worked. What about food? That's terrible. Well, and give her money for lunch at Mickey D's. Okay, so she would take her daughter to the park and she would give her daughter some money so she could buy lunch at Mickey D's. And we've studied Mickey D's before. Mickey D's, that's M-I-C-K-Y, Mickey, and then D, apostrophe S, Mickey D's. And that is the slang version, the daily English casual version of McDonald's. Oh, boy. So the mother's at work. She takes her daughter to the park and gives her $5 for lunch at McDonald's. Mm Mm-hmm. Not too cool. The next sentence, no harm ever came to the girl. Harm, H-A-R-M, something bad. Nothing bad ever happened to the girl. Thank God. So the nine-year-old daughter, you know, she probably went to the park in this situation many, many times, but nothing bad ever happened to her. That's good. But... Now the mom has been arrested. So what happens to the child? If the mother is in jail, what happens to the nine-year-old girl? The child is now in social services. Mm -hmm. So the child is now, right now, in social services. Social services is a proper noun. That means there's a big S on both words, social services. And social services is the U.S. government agency that takes care of children who cannot live with their parents. Maybe they don't have parents or the parents are bad or they're in jail or something like that. Oh, so this is a, it's a very sad story. Um, I don't know about in your country, but in America there are many single parents. And it's very difficult being a single parent because you need to get a job and pay for your rent and food and the child and the child's education. And a lot of single parents can't afford a babysitter or a daycare center. It can be very expensive in America. And that was... The situation with this mother and I I do feel sorry for her losing her child is a, a serious a horrible uh, nightmare uh, something that is not good for any parent but the mother was neglecting her child how could you leave your child at the park 
for hours on end and give the child some money for McDonald's? Now, I'll be honest. When I was nine years old, I would love it. I would love to spend all day at the park every day going to eat at McDonald's. That would be fun. So as a child, this is great. But as a parent, that's very irresponsible. It's really difficult, though, especially if the parent doesn't have enough money. They can't afford daycare centers. Maybe they have no grandparents or, you know, another friend around to help take care of the child. It's a serious problem. And it's not just this one woman who has this problem. It happens to many, many people. What do you think? Do you think this 46-year-old mother should have been put in jail? Do you think the child and the mother should stay together or should the child be taken away from the mother? This is a tragedy that I hope none of you ever have to go through. It's no fun. It's a sad story. Okay, so let's look at those key words again. Slammer. S-L-A-M-M-E-R. Jail. Have you ever been in the slammer? Georgia, one of America's 50 states. I spent about two months, two and a half months in Georgia a long time ago. It was hot and humid. I was in the army at the time, so it was no fun. Taken in. So in this Story, taken in, means arrested or put in jail. It's a phrasal verb. Taken in can have several other meanings too, but in this story, once again, it means arrested. Neglecting. N-E-G-L-E-C-T-I-N-G. Neglecting. Not caring for. Routinely. R-O-U-T-I-N-E-L-Y. Routinely means regularly to drop someone off at some place to leave someone at some place mickey d's that's the casual or slang version of mcdonald's the famous hamburger restaurant and social services the u.s government agency who takes care of children who cannot live with their parents. Let's listen to the news two more times. It's the slammer for a mom in Georgia. The 46-year-old mother was taken in for neglecting her 9-year-old daughter. When the mother had to work, she'd routinely drop her daughter off at the local park and give her money for lunch at Mickey D's. No harm ever came to the girl. The child is now in social services. It's the slammer for a mom in Georgia. The 46-year-old mother was taken in for neglecting her 9-year-old daughter. When the mother had to work, she'd routinely drop her daughter off at the local park and give her money for lunch at Mickey D's. No harm ever came to the girl. The child is now in social services. How you doing, everybody? This is Country Shane, and I'm here to bring you the facts. Not protecting your child is a serious thing. In the U.S., 2,300 children go missing every day. 67% of those kids go missing from social services. So parents, do your job. It's tough. It takes 18 years. But don't let your child be a statistic. 
This has been Country Shane bringing you the facts. Wow. 2,300 children go missing every day in the United States. And 67% of those children go missing from social services. That's the government agency who's supposed to protect children. Now, that number does include runaway children, but uh, this is really tragic information. Being a parent is tough. Being a single parent is super tough. Make sure you have a good network of friends and support so that you can uh, do your job as a parent. It's a lonely job. It's a tough job. It takes a long time, 24 hours a day, at least 18 years. But uh, don't let your child be a statistic. Don't allow your child to become a missing child. Yeah, we don't want any tragedies. Thanks a lot, Country Shane. Okay, it's about time for some answers to your questions. And I promise the rest of the podcast will be happy. Once again, this week's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Audible is the Amazon company. Everybody knows Amazon. So this is a, this is a perfect partner for, for us, for what I do and what many of my students want. Audible is a company that has audiobooks. Yeah, it's not easy. And you can get an audiobook for free. Go to www.audibletrial.com slash LME. I'll spell that www.audibletrial.com slash LME. Of course, L-M-E stands for Let's Master English. So you go here and you sign up and then you can choose any book that you want for free. Now, at the end of July, I'll be doing a video talking about the audio book called Tuesdays with Maury by Mitch Album. And I'll be specifically covering the book, the 10th Anniversary Edition. It's going to be great. This is, this is my book club. So every month, I'll have a new book that I'll recommend to everybody. Now, the Mitch Albom's book, Tuesdays with Maury, is just over three hours. So it's not very long. But I want you to get the book and listen to it. Not just one time. Listen to it several times. Listen to it like when you listen to my podcast. And once again, at the end of July 2014, I will make a video discussing the book. So as you're listening to the book, if you do have questions, send me an email. And maybe I'll be able to address your questions uh, regarding the book. Okay? So my email address is... Daily Dictation Members at gmail.com. Now, if you sign up at audibletrial.com slash LME, you get one free audiobook. But after a month, they will start charging you $14.95 every month. That might sound expensive. However, if you are enjoying audiobooks, the price is very good. Because some audiobooks are over $30. But by being a member, you can get that $30 book for $14.95. You don't have to worry. So that membership allows you to have one book every month. The first month is free. After that, 
$14.95. And of course, you can quit. This is a, a trial, so if you don't like it, you can stop. Me, I've been a member for several months, and I really enjoy uh, audiobooks. Uh, I usually go to bed listening to an audiobook. I wash the dishes listening to an audiobook. You know, I don't have a TV. I don't watch TV. I don't want a TV. But I miss the sound. <laughs> so I listen to podcasts and audiobooks. Fantastic. I love it. Now, if you have the book, Tuesdays with Maury, if you read it, that's great. This is really going to help your listening comprehension skills. So, once again, if you're interested, this is a great opportunity. Audible is an outstanding company. They have 150,000 audiobooks, and you can get one for free. Go to www.audibletrial.com slash LME. Now, let's get into those questions. Okay, our first question is a follow-up question from Tulio in Brazil. And Tulio was asking about the T sound as a glottal stop or a stop sound. Yes, I've thought about this all week. And I understand why people say a glottal stop. Glottal stops are when the sound stops in your throat. When I say stop sound, what I mean is when the tongue stops the sound in front of the mouth. For example, it, but don't finish the T, just say it, and the tongue is stopped in the front of the mouth, okay? Now, some glottal stops do not need the tongue to make the stop sound. They can just stop in the back of the mouth. Ain't especially an uh, NG kind of sound. That'll stop in the back of the mouth. But usually with the T, we do use our tongue to make the stop sound. So it was, if we say it fast, it was, it was. And I'm doing a stop sound. It was, that was, that you, that you, that you. But Mary, but Mary. Okay, so I'm doing a stop sound for all those. Once again, if you're doing a glottal stop, that's fine. It should sound the same. It doesn't matter. Now, Tulio wants to ask specifically about adverbs, especially adverbs, they all end in L-Y, where the uh, regular part ends in a T. So, unfortunately, lately, definitely, approximately. What about these sounds? And once again, Tulio, the stop sound is correct. Unfortunately, I'm using the tip of my tongue to stop the T. Unfortunately, lately, lately, definitely, approximately. I'm, I, now, the throat does stop a little bit, but the focus for me is on my tongue. Okay? So I hope that cleans it up a little bit for you, Tulio. Thank you. Our next question comes from Mikhail. Could you discuss the words sports and sport? S-P-O-R-T-S and S-P-O-R-T. What's the difference? When do we use these words? Uh, tell me. That's a, that's a great question. So in America, sports with an S refers to any athletic activity. So typically baseball, basketball, football, swimming, but some people would include billiards, golf, darts, curling, <laughs> so maybe even drinking. So in America, we say sports to cover all different types of athletic activities. However, in the UK, they say sport. They do not use, as far as I know, they do not use sport as a mass count noun. They don't say sports in the UK. I'm not exactly sure, but in America, we do. So in America, we could say, I love sports. And that means many different sports, baseball, football, basketball, whatever. I love it. 
But in the UK, the same person would say, I love sport with no S. Okay, so that's the big difference. So the UK English and American English, there is a difference. Now, in America, we could say, what sport do you play? That's possible. And the nuance is, we know you only play one sport. Or we're referring to a season, like the fall. In the fall in America, you could play football or, I don't know, swimming or running cross country. There's only three sports you can choose. Which one did you choose? Which one do you play? Which sport do you play? Now, once again, if we're talking about all activities, we say, which sports do you play? So, Mikhail, ask me, Shane, which sports do you play? Oh, I play uh, football, baseball, I play volleyball, uh, cycling, etc., etc. Now, if Mikhail said, Shane, which sport do you play? Then I would say this. Well, in the summer, cycling. In the fall, running. In the spring, swimming. That's the idea. I only play one sport per season. Does that make sense? I hope so. Our next question comes from David Carvalho. Thank you, David. Uh, first of all, thanks for the videos and podcasts. They're helping me a lot. I've watched almost all your videos and listened to all your podcasts. And my English is improving so much. Now, David has a question. What's the best and most correct pronunciation for the word awesome? A W E. S-O-M-E. Okay, so the typical most perfect pronunciation in America, awesome, awesome, awesome. It's an A-W sound, not O, but ah, which means your tongue needs to be pushed down. Ah, awesome. It's not really som, it's more sim. Awesome, awesome. Now, when we say this word in a real situation, it usually means excellent. So we have to give that feeling, David. So if you want to say the word awesome, you should probably say awesome. It was awesome. It was excellent. I loved it. Oh, this podcast is awesome. That game was awesome. Does that help, David? Next, we have a comment from Emmanuel Guti. I was listening to Let's Master English Podcast 33, and you were talking about a goose. But I didn't know how to write goose. I didn't know how to spell it. So I used the search by voice option in Google. <gasps> And it worked. My pronunciation was perfect. Google showed me a goose. It showed me the spelling. Your podcast is helping me so much. It's amazing how your podcast helps me. Emmanuel, that is awesome news. I love it. Everybody, start using search by voice in Google. That will help you determine whether or not your pronunciation is good or bad. <laughs> and one more comment. This is from Ivan Beltran. Living far away from home is hard. But since I have arrived to the States, ooh, Ivan lives in America, Coach Shane has been an amazing companion. Oh, that's great, Ivan. I listen to him every single day, and I feel that I have been honing my spoken English continuously. That's excellent. Thank you very much, Coach Shane, Ivan Beltran. Ivan, yeah, I know what it's like to live far away from home. I lived in South Korea for over 20 years. It's lonely. It's nice to have a friend. And uh, Ivan, I'm more than happy to be your companion to help you master English. And uh, thank you so much, Ivan. I really appreciate it.
And that's it, everybody. Today's podcast is a little bit short. It's been a very rough, long week. Lots of stress, but uh, I'm surviving. How about you? I I hope that your week was great. And uh, thank you once again. Thank you so much for downloading my podcast and listening to them. Remember, you can get this podcast on your Android phone with our app. That's right. We have an Android app. Max created it. Just go to Google Play and search for Let's Master English Podcast app. And it's a big big red microphone and you can get that there. People seem to love it. That is so awesome. Of course, we are on iTunes. And if you left a comment and a rating... I would thank you so much. Seriously, I would appreciate it. Um, It helps people find our podcast, which is very important. I also upload these podcasts on YouTube. It takes a few days, but I do put it up on YouTube. It's on Coach Shane's ESL channel. And uh, say hi in the community. We have a community on Google+. Let's Master English. We also have a Twitter account. It's at Coach Shane. We're on Facebook. On Facebook, it is ESL Coach Shane. And don't forget, we also have our website, which is www.letsmasterenglish.com. And we also have a newsletter. And the newsletter has all the key information from every podcast. It's great stuff, good to study with. Also, if you sign up for the newsletter, we will send you eight free lessons of DDM. That's my premium online class. It requires about 30 minutes a day. If you don't want the lessons, that's okay. Um, You can watch them anytime you want. And of course, we would love to have you be a member of uh, the DDM community. That would be fantastic. And finally, our book club. At the end of this month, uh, I'm not exactly sure on the date, July 28th, 29th, 30th, 31st of 2014, I'll be making a video discussing the audio book Tuesdays with Maury by Mitch Album. This is the book of the month, and it's an audio book. You can get the book free if you sign up at www.audibletrial.com slash LME. Every month, we'll have a new book, and once again, this month, it's a great book. It's a classic, Tuesdays with Maury. So uh, stay tuned for that video. It's going to be pretty cool. That's it, everybody. I'm out of here. You guys have a fantastic week, and I'll see you next week. Thank you so much, and together, let's master English!